Good morning, neurodiverse universe. Of those who were diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder or they discovered that they're autistic and are self-diagnosed, an amazing number of them begin to experience a phenomenon where they begin to wonder and even start to believe that they are and have been faking it. Faking autism. Faking all of their autistic traits and features for their entire lives. This is called imposter phenomenon or imposter syndrome. Basically, in the context of this video, it's when people doubt their own autism diagnosis. Again, self-diagnosis is valid in my mind. So, many of us who are autistic have had this sinking feeling that we don't deserve the diagnosis or we've been faking it and may feel worried that we're appropriating a diagnosis that we don't deserve. Some people report to me that they feel like they've been faking it their entire lives. I mean, wow, if that's true, that's gotta be the greatest long-running performance of all time. And the award for longest running dramedy, portraying the part of socially confused, masking, hypersensitive human goes to you. <laughs> Imposter syndrome can make you feel lonely, ashamed, and afraid to tell others. It can hamper communication, it can keep you from asking for help, but it can be even worse when you've become so skilled at masking for so long that it's almost second nature and you have difficulty dropping your mask or don't even realize you're masking in the moment. Many people report not realizing they were masking at an event or in a social situation until after it's over and they've had time to think about it. Many find that they're mentally and physically drained. Okay, let me get personal for a moment. I've discovered that I actually cling to my masking behavior, usually without even knowing. Even after diagnosis, I found myself clinging to it like, like Jack clinged to that door that Rose was hogging. Leo! <laughs> I think I do that bit too much. Leo! But like Jack, I'm finding myself slowly letting go. But instead of tragically drowning in an ocean of masking sorrow and despair, I'm finding myself bit by bit freeing myself from mental anguish that only weighed me down. Like Rose. <laughs> okay, I'll stop with the Titanic metaphors. I feel like a lot of us who continue to mask do so because it's served us throughout our lives in social situations, and it's been a tool that we've used to get things done and survive. We may even be partially identifying ourselves, defining ourselves by who our mask portrays rather than who we really are. The question is, is that bad? Is it good? Maybe it just is. I've learned to operate for so long with my masks that it's challenging to just drop them. I'm also of the opinion that masking is not always bad, but I also believe that it's not always good either. But it is a tough thing to drop after learning, honing, and maybe even perfecting over the course of your life. For many, masking works in certain situations, and even though it can be exhausting and you may end up paying for it later, it can still become your way of life. For some, it's the only way others know them. This is one reason why it's so difficult for people to grasp the idea of you being autistic. But you never acted autistic, they say. You don't look it. Or, but when you were a kid, you, or how about this one? Yeah, you always loved parties. I mean, so when you begin to behave more like you, others may find it difficult because you may have played a role in their life and your growth and changes may mean that they are left with holes in their lives that you once filled. Just as we expect others to give us grace, patience, and compassion, it's always a good idea to provide that to others as well. I know a lot of people have been utterly crapped on and they may not feel that others are deserving of your grace and compassion, and especially not your patience. But if you plan on having a continuing relationship with those people, maybe the best path forward is to help them become educated. And that requires grace, compassion, and patience. Now don't come after me for saying that. This is usually true. There are always exceptions, of course, but generally speaking, offer grace, compassion, and patience to others who don't understand. So many autistic individuals that I speak with who have been light diagnosed say that they don't yet feel comfortable allowing themselves to behave in a way that's more true to them, which may have more visible autism traits and characteristics associated with them, like stimming, especially in front of others. I've spoken with people who tell me that they feel they're not worthy to receive treatment, accommodations, or any other sort of help in their lives. So many people doubt so much that they wonder if their diagnosis by a licensed, experienced professional who specializes in adult autism spectrum disorder may have given the diagnosis in error. 
If this is you, you may even feel like you swayed the result of testing by behaving a certain way in an effort to get a diagnosis. You may feel like you provided the wrong information. If that is you, think about the struggles you've had throughout your life, wondering about why certain things keep happening to you or why you feel the way you do and how autism may be the answer. If you've been diagnosed or you've done the work to arrive at a solid self-diagnosis and if the diagnosis made sense at some point, isn't it okay that it still makes sense now? Even if you are overthinking things or have a tendency to talk yourself out of things. Imposter phenomenon, aka imposter experience, aka imposter syndrome. What is this scientifically? Why do so many of us have such a hard time accepting an autism diagnosis? Pauline Rose Clance, she was the first to study imposter syndrome in college students. It was discovered that imposter syndrome is universal across all genders, cultures, and people. And it's shared amongst the neurotypical and neurodivergent as well. Yet interestingly, imposter syndrome appears to be more prevalent with disadvantaged persons. Yes, interesting indeed. Traditionally and currently, autism is considered a disability and that puts autistic individuals at higher risk of disadvantage. So it only makes sense that they might experience imposter syndrome more often. But why? Is it a self-esteem problem? Is it depression? Is it anxiety? Oddly enough, imposter syndrome does not seem to be tied to self-esteem, depression, or anxiety. In addition to uh, disproportionately affecting disadvantaged persons, it also appears to affect academically minded people most, which are people who seem to really get into education and scholarly things. I know a lot of late diagnosed academic autistic individuals. Additionally, it seems autistic people may possibly be more affected by imposter syndrome because sadly, many have had a very long history of experiencing failure or at least feelings of failure. And that history often includes rejection by others. But wait, there's more. Think about the pressure felt that the autistic individual has to produce, meaning get a job, go to school, make money, be productive, member of society, etc. That pressure can be intense and chronic and lead to meltdowns and burnout. So if you want to know more about burnout, check out my video on my YouTube channel on autistic burnout. When there are serious challenges that are not being acknowledged, honored, or validated, being able to perform as expected becomes difficult, if not impossible. Because the stigma about autism and the narrow idea that the media, many within the scientific community, and many hurtful organizations have perpetuated about what it looks like, many autistic individuals feel if they are not experiencing what they have seen portrayed in movies or TV shows or even if they don't present like others that they actually know, like their eight-year-old second cousin Truxton who lives in Utah <laughs> and diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder with accompanying language and cognitive impairment, then they have no right to identify with it as a disability. Yeah, it doesn't always look the same. Ignorance occurs when a member of a group or community such as the autistic community is assumed to be a certain way by others just because of their group or community affiliation. People with ignorance base their ideas about the group on knowledge obtained from outside of the group and that knowledge turns out to be false. Family members who say, uh, you don't look autistic because the only thing they know about autism is from cousin Truxton's mother as she explains what his experience is through her lens even though she doesn't really know um, what it's like to be autistic. Or it could be a large organization that makes many millions of dollars each year in donations and claims to speak for autism but what they put out there about autism is not always based on the experiences of autistic individuals and many autistic individuals insist that the information they put out there is wrong. Or maybe it could be a mental health provider or a nurse who has an outdated idea about autism and continues to put out that outdated information out there to um, patients and the community. So if your flavor of autism does not match what you've previously associated with autism, then you may be internally doubting yourself. But this poses a problem not only for you, but for others as well. Because when you doubt your autism in addition to your own discomfort, others who may also be closer to your presentation or flavor will never hear about your experiences and they may never discover their own autism diagnosis. It's not your responsibility, I know, but you may hold some information that might be really helpful to others and helping others can be a wonderful experience for you and them. 
The more you talk about your experiences, the more others who are also unrealized autistic can help themselves and get the help they need, especially family members. So the reality is many people may have been having similar features, characteristics, and experiences with autism, but they're not talking about it much. Thankfully, there are a lot of people on social media now who are bravely talking about their experiences. Sure, a lot of them do get a lot of hate from people accusing them of seeking attention, trying to fit into the neurodivergent trend and having other things to gain, but I don't see it. Not in the 20,000 plus hours of therapy and psychological assessment I have under my belt, so the haters are just gonna have to continue to hate. They're just trolls and they can go live under a bridge. The bigger issue is that imposter syndrome can prevent people from talking about their experiences and their struggles. All right, now to my what to do about it section. Number one, open up about it. Being wise but vulnerable about what you're experiencing while embracing your own diagnosis, traits, and features may help. Notice I said being wise is recommended. I believe knowing you're autistic is a gift and you must be selective with whom you share that gift with. Use wisdom and consider not telling anyone and everyone out there because not everyone will understand or believe you and you don't need that negativity. Additionally, there is a nation of armchair psychologists and real mental health professionals that don't know autism well at all or have outdated wrong ideas about it. So, wanna hear the one I hear most? Uh, this is it, that adults cannot be diagnosed. Bull crap. Anyway, be wise about who you tell and if people are hating on you, let others in the neurodivergent nation know. We've got your back. Number two. Speaking of us other neurodivergents having your back, number two is to seek out your people. I frequently use the term neurodivergent nation to refer to autistic and ADHD and other neurodivergent people. I created this term to better help create a sense of belonging and validation and support for each other. I've talked with people who've said that they were afraid to talk to people about their diagnosis, either self-diagnosis or professional, because they're afraid that if they talk to the wrong person, they might be doubted. I've also talked with those who are afraid to learn more about it or talk with other neurodivergent people who might give them information that tries to discredit their diagnosis like, like, what? You think you're autistic? I'm autistic and I can tell you for a fact that autistic people cannot feel empathy for others, you know? It's like completely full of crap. Obviously, you know this to be false because autistic folks are extremely capable of empathy, but that was just an example. Some are also afraid that if they are told things by others that challenge their diagnosis, that they'll fall right back into their previous state of confusion, depression, and anxiety. Even worse, and this happens more than you might think, when having gone through an experience of thinking, they finally know what's going on in their heads and lives, and then they're told by like a mental health or a medical professional that doesn't quite know enough about it, that they were misdiagnosed autistic and that they're really not, that can be devastating and harmful to them. So seek out people who provide a safe place for you to talk about your experiences. This means that you may have to feel people out a little online. Ask a few questions. You can ask some quick test questions like, so uh, what do you think about uh, those darn vaccines causing autism, huh? Those, huh, am I right? Uh, or how about this one? So I heard you can cure autism with healthy eating, ionized super special water, multi-level marketing vitamins. So if they start saying stuff like this, that you, they think you can be cured soon, those are pretty good indicators that you might uh, consider looking for support elsewhere. When neurodivergent people come out and talk about their experiences and others resonate with those experiences, it tends to help others feel like they're not alone and not faking it. Not only that, but there are so many things people experience that are correlated with autism that is not included in the DSM-5. And you can find out more about others' experiences with those when you meet more people who are autistic as well. Number three, group therapy or social groups. They can be a great place to safely talk about these things. I've run groups at my clinic before, but I'm taking a break right now because I'm trashed at the end of the day and I don't have energy to do groups usually. So when I start them up again, I'll start having them earlier in the day to avoid my own autistic burnout myself. But I hope you can find someone in your area that you might be able to participate in these groups with. Maybe you can come to ours. I don't know, maybe I'll see you there. Even if you're just visiting once, that's totally fine. Number four. It also may help to make a list of the things that you feel like an imposter about. You can share this list with people with whom you trust and have shown can handle it. 
Get some feedback from them, but again, they kind of have to know this stuff to give you good feedback. Number five, challenge your cognitive distortions. Cognitive distortions are exaggerated or irrational thoughts. Uh, worrying that you're faking it, that's one of them, even if it's non-conscious, and this can be uh, because of cognitive distortions. Number six, one way to challenge your distortions is to make a list of your successes so that you can accept them. Say, yeah, people really seem to like my art, but I'm a hack. I just mash the styles of Van Gogh and Bob Ross together. Well, guess what? If people like it and they want it and they buy it or they just say they like it, there's your proof right there. Tell yourself that you are legit because of proof and go ahead and add your proof to your list of successes. I was a professional musician for many years, but would look at other keyboardists and singers and wither in self-consciousness. It took me a long time to stop calling myself a hack of a musician. My accomplishments include a full-length CD of original music that I made tens of dollars on. <laughs> Seriously, but no, really. I played in front of uh, screaming crowds of thousands, have played on television and on the radio and in concerts, played before some huge bands like Augustana. I opened a music store because I thought the local stores were gouging musicians. I produced and managed a couple of bands, including the kid band Squish, which was one of the best live rock bands in the world in their day. I taught music for 15 years to kids in an elementary school and an after school program. And I wrote some really great stuff even as a young as eight years old. And I still thought, oh, I'm just a hack. You know what? I am a musician and I'm damn good. Number seven, another way to challenge your distortions is to do your best to not jump to conclusions about faking it. If you conclude that your sensory issues are not only an issue because you read about other people's specific sensory issues and suddenly develop the same ones, then think back to other uh, sensory issues you've had in the past. Maybe you have what I call transient sensory sensitivities. You may find that sensory hyper or hypo sensitivities can come and go and change in frequency and intensity and in duration, and that is okay. That can happen. There's no rule that says once you experience something that you have to always experience it or otherwise you're faking it. Also understand you can have new features and traits of autism just pop up anytime. Just because you don't remember experiencing a certain one in the past doesn't mean you never will. It may mean you're becoming more aware of them or more comfortable being yourself and not masking as much. Number eight, watch your self-talk. Sometimes the most harmful and inaccurate messages come to you from yourself. Instead of accusing yourself of being dramatic or weak or whatever nonsense you might be telling yourself about your autism symptoms, try telling yourself that no two autistic people are alike and they present autistic traits and features very differently. Tell yourself it's okay to be cautious and to go slow through your process of self-discovery. When you do things that make you feel bad as a result of autism-like traits, be kind and compassionate and forgiving and kind with what you say to yourself. Number nine. Sometimes a professional diagnosis of autism can go a long way in overcoming imposter syndrome. Just having a, hopefully, highly qualified experienced doctor who really knows autism can be very validating. Number 10, Leo Buscaglia, I think I said that last name right, I don't know. But anyway, Leo Buscaglia, 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 anyway, this dude, really cool, <laughs> said, worry never robs tomorrow of its sorrows, it only saps today of its joy. And to me, this reminds me that we must make conscious decisions to remind ourselves of the things we actually control and do not control. Worrying if you're fabricating autism symptoms or if you're, or if you're mistakenly diagnosed won't make it go away because it's not something you can decide to have or not have. So if you don't think that it's something you have uh, any cognitive control over whatsoever, if nothing else, just put it aside for a bit until you feel like you can come back to it later. And in the meantime, enjoy your life as much as possible. You may never be able to get fully rid of imposter syndrome, but it can sure help to understand that you're not alone, and people have experienced these same feelings and doubts, even me. Moreover, isn't it a good thing to have a little bit of caution, a little bit of humility, a little bit more care about your own autism symptoms? Because this whole imposter syndrome thing may really prove one thing that maybe others don't understand about you. You're full of empathy and you really do care. Maybe you don't show it in the ways that everybody else appreciates, but there it is. And your empathy is undeniable. All of this leads to living a more authentic life. So embrace your autism and honor it. You are worthy. You're one of us. You're part of 
our neurodivergent nation, and I hope this helps you in your neurodiverse universe.